<laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Hands-On channel. I'm glad you decided to stop by and hang out with me here on a uh, Sunday evening. Uh, we got a thunderstorm going on outside right now and it's really nice getting some good rain coming in. It's cooled down quite a bit so uh, just crazy stuff. I had kind of a wild weekend. Yesterday when I woke up uh, my air conditioner wasn't working and I'm like, my God, not again. Uh, the fan was blowing on the outdoor, uh, condenser unit. The fan was turning, but the compressor wasn't kicking on. So I had to make an emergency repair. I had to run over to, uh, the hardware store and buy a, uh, condenser. This is my old condenser that I pulled out. So if you have just a little side note here, if you ever have an air conditioner problem, I mean, almost like 99% of the time, it's this stupid condenser here. They go bad, it seems like, about every two or three years, and your air will just quit working. But anyway, I had to fix that yesterday, so by the time I chased down the part, it ended up taking me almost all day. Uh, but I was running around on my Harley quite a bit yesterday, and when you're out on a motorcycle, if you don't ride, you, you don't know this, but if you do ride... You're just so much more in tune with your surroundings. You, you pay a lot more attention. You're looking around a lot more because you're wanting to make sure you don't get run, out, run over by, you know, someone that's not paying attention or talking on their cell phone or whatever. So you, you notice things. And as I was riding around on my motorcycle, I had to go back and forth because I went and got the part. The, uh, I got back home, it was the wrong part. I needed one with three prongs on the top and the one they gave me only had two prongs on the top so I couldn't hook it up. So I had to run back over there real quick because they were closing in like 15 minutes. So I jumped back on my bike, ran back over there just in time and I got one that was too large. Uh, it was like a 55 slash five and I needed a 40 slash five. And I told the guy, I was like, well, I guess if this is the only thing, the closest thing you have, I'll go ahead and take it. Uh, and I'll go home and look it up on the internet, and if it's not any good, if it's not going to work for me, I'll just bring it back Monday. If it does work, hey, that's great. We'll get the air going. Well, anyway, uh, I came back home from that. I decided, I looked it up on the internet. I decided, no, I don't want to push it that far because that could actually damage my air conditioner compressor, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to break my unit trying to get it working, right? So, then I thought, hey, wait, there's an Ace Hardware over here nearby, so I'll run over there. So my point is, and they had the part, right? And so my point is, I was running around all over the place on the motorcycle. And it wasn't a super hot day. It was a little hot, but it wasn't like super hot for where I live. And I've noticed this. This is not the first time I've noticed this, so it's not really anecdotal. This is something I've been noticing for, man, we moved out here in like 2008, we moved into this neighborhood in like 2008. So since about 2008, I've noticed a steady decline of how many people I actually see out on the property. Used to be when we first moved out here, you know, you would not everybody, but you would see a lot of people out. Anytime the weather was halfway decent, you'd see people out doing stuff, either mowing or, you know, planting a garden or whatever, or kids playing and stuff like that. I can't tell you the last time that I saw kids playing outside, okay? And so, uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, a lot of times on the weekends, especially on Sunday, I tend to get a lot more introspective. So, a lot of these thoughts that I'm, I'm gonna lay out here are, I'm just now, they're hypotheses, right? I haven't really uh, sussed them all the way out or, or figured out everything that I'm trying to explain to you guys. Uh, but I just wanted to talk about this topic a little bit because I think it's one that's often overlooked, especially in the, you know, prepper community, the survival community, but especially amongst males. We don't like to talk about this stuff. And what is it? What am, I'm going to get to the cut to the chase here. What are we three or four minutes in now? I'm going to finally cut to the chase of what I'm trying to get to. I believe I was, it just hit me like a like a download or something, or like an epiphany. I believe that we have an epidemic of loneliness, especially in the prepper community and the political community. You know, so uh, over the years, I've lost lots of friends because of politics. I mean, we just couldn't see eye to eye on anything. And you know, a lot of those people, you know, I liked them and they liked me until they found out 
what I believed in, you know, adamantly and what I'm passionate about. And they couldn't stand me anymore or vice versa, right? There's been a lot of that too. A lot of it is, is that as you age and mature, you know, people move, they, they go their separate ways. You, you, you lose contact, you know, things like that. And some of that's perfectly natural. You know, some of the things is, is that, you know, somebody told me a long time ago, you don't really ever see, uh, when you've got a friend, you don't really see their true colors until you know them for about four or five years. And I would say that's true. You know, I've met a lot of people that we're like work friends, right? And there's a different level. Well, I, I ha I've had lots of work friends over the years. I make work friends really easily. But making good, long-lasting friends that you could count on, like, you know, if you needed something, if you needed some help or something or whatever, right? You needed a place to crash because things were bad at your place or, or maybe your, you know, your AC or maybe something more serious like your water heater is bad. You need to have a good friend or a, at least a family member around where you can go over and take a shower and, you know, at least maintain some uh, sense of normalcy. But as I was thinking about this, it just all hit me like a ton of bricks because I was like, yeah, I think it's this way on both sides, but neither side will ever admit it that the divides that have been created, artificially created in my opinion, in most cases, whether that be the divide between black and white, the divide between rich and poor, you know, uh, whatever, male and female, pick your poison. All of these divides, uh, people have come along and driven big, huge wedges in between them and made it to where you just can't reach those people across the aisle because you have to compromise on your own principles, morals, and values to accept what they're doing and how they're carrying on, right? So over the years, my point is, is I've lost a lot more friends than I've made, and it leaves you feeling lonely. I mean, and I'm, you know, you guys, a lot of you guys, I consider you friends, the ones that we go back and forth, but I don't know you. I would, you know, you would know me and I'd be at a severe disadvantage if somebody out in public was like, oh, hey, hands on channel, what's going on? You know, so far I'm thankful that that hasn't happened. And I hope no one ever recognizes me and comes out and says something like that because it would freak me the hell out. And it's not that I'm an antisocial. It's just that uh, well, it goes back to what I was trying to get into is that the cell phones, I believe, and the internet have made us all a lot more antisocial than we used to be. I mean, I used to spend a lot of time, hours, talking to friends on the telephone. You know, back when we had phones with a cord on the wall, and then we got ones with the, you know, uh, uh, wireless that you could walk around. I mean, that was something special when that happened. And all of a sudden we had a cordless phone. You didn't have to be tethered to that wall and you could walk around and talk to people. But even now, you know, like I was thinking of this too, like when the phone rings in the old days before caller ID, when everybody had a phone that plugged into the wall, you were excited when a phone call came in because it might have been a friend of yours you hadn't heard from for a long time or a distant relative that, you know, was coming into town and wanted to stay with you over the weekend or whatever. And I can't tell you, I mean, there's very few people that call me anymore on the phone. It's mostly text messaging. I don't get to hear their voice. They don't get to hear mine. I can't, I, I am not comfortable uh, ever since the text messaging thing kind of took over. I've kind of felt left behind because a lot of other people are totally into that and they keep in contact via text on a, like a daily basis with other people. But I just don't feel comfortable because I can't, every time I type something out in a text message form, it doesn't feel like me because there's no, I mean, there's no, there's nothing human behind it. It's just, you know, text on a, on a, tablet or whatever or on a cell phone and it's just not real i like to hear people's voices because then i can tell when i first call them what kind of mood are they in did i just wake them up are they suffering from depression right now are they in a great mood you know do they have a great story to tell me whatever i love that sort of stuff and there's just very few people uh really uh 
I've only got one friend left that we really, on a regular basis, will at least talk on the phone. But I was thinking about him the other day too, you know, me and him used to go on these massive motorcycle rides, just, you know, three or 400 miles in a day. We mostly stayed in my state, but we would go all around and just go see all these really cool things. And, you know, that's just, that's just vaporized. It's just gone away. And it's not that I don't want to, it's not that he don't want to, it's just, it's timing, it's work, it's obligations, it's sometimes laziness. It's all sorts of things that contribute to this. But the point that I'm trying to make with this, this epidemic of loneliness that I, I posit is a problem here. And it's part of the reason that we can't communicate with each other anymore. We've like lost the ability. It's like, it's like we're devolving or something. And everyone sees it, everyone except for me, I guess, sees it as some sort of a, a next level evolutionary step, but I see every step forward as a step into de-evolution. It's not, it's not good for us as a species. We're supposed to be social creatures. And, you know, I've got the hundred acres over there <clears throat> and uh, there's times, man, most of the time it doesn't, it doesn't really bother me, but there are times when I'm going over there and I want to share what I've been doing with people. And it's really hard to get people to come out there because, you know, you have, they have to commit to driving out there and, you know, it's through the country and, you know, I, I don't know. I, I had just hoped that <clears throat> when I got the land, there would be a lot more interest, like within some of my immediate family and stuff like that. And I just don't see it. I don't see it. I'm the only one that's interested in it. So in a way, because of the lifestyle that I have chosen, I have also chosen not, not, you know, not because I wanted to, but just because it's the, the, the default mechanism. I have also chosen a self isolation type of a lifestyle. And I didn't mean for that to happen. I just wanted to be able to grow my own food and, you know, have my own space and be able to shoot guns on my property and, you know, pretty much, uh, live by the supreme law of the land, the U.S. Constitution, on my property and, you know, have a good life. That's what I wanted. And I thought that once I built that, or even just bought it, even though we haven't built a whole lot, we've built a few things, but I thought that, you know, people would want to be involved with that sort of stuff. But I was wrong. Most of them do not. And you have to twist their arms to get them to do anything. And I'm not, I'm not into persuading people that much anymore, you know? Uh, so, I mean, some of it may be my own fault, but there are times guys, when I go over there to the land and I'm like, man, I just wish someone was here. I wish my daughter was here. I wish my, <laughs> so I call my daughter's boyfriend, my un-in-law because they're not married and I don't approve of it, but Hey, that's their life. They're going to do what they want to do. But my un-in-law, you know, I kind of hoped he'd been over there with me and, and, and wanted to get, you know, do some hardcore work, do some building, do some stuff like that. But it just never seems to work out that way. Now, again, I haven't directly asked. And I bet you if I did, if I was like, oh, hey, I need you on this project, would you come? I bet I could, you know, I could guilt him into doing it. But I don't want that. I want people that, that want to be a part of it. And that's been a struggle for me. And I think, I, I guess I first started noticing it whenever I started, you know, it's, it's natural when you're prepping. A lot of us have causes and reasons why we're prepping. I talk about a lot of those reasons here on my channel, uh, maybe to my detriment, probably definitely to my detriment. It's YouTube shadow bans my channel because I talk about the things that I'm concerned about which that's just the way it is. I'm not looking for, you know, pity or anything. I'm just saying that's just the way it is. And so, you know, maybe some of that I've backed myself into a corner, so to speak in that regard, but it's just interesting. These are all things that, that just hit me today, like a ton of bricks. And I was like, my God, it's an epidemic of loneliness. I got some kind of a spider web or something distracted me over there. There it is. 
And I think a lot of people, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong down in the comments. Do you guys have times where you're just lonely and you're like, man, I wish, you know, my buddy was over here, you know, even if he wasn't helping, just being there while you're working on the car, talking to you, drinking a couple of beers with you, whatever, you know, whatever you're into, drink a couple of soda pops or, you know, a couple of glasses of water, whatever, you know, whatever you're into, hang out, talk to your buddy, you know, do mechanic stuff, whatever it is you're into, right? And even that, you know, I'm a guitar player, but now I'm like Solo Man 5000 because basically uh, my other guitar playing friends don't have time for it anymore. They don't make time for it anymore. So I've like lost a lot. I've lost a lot of the skills that I, I, I gained working on that guitar neck for years and years and learning the chords and learning, you know, and I pick it up sometimes now and I'm just like, man, maybe I should just sell all these things, you know, and it saddens me to think that way because it's something that I'm so passionate about. I love doing it, but even myself, you know, I'm so busy trying to prep and trying to, you know, make sure that I'm looking out around every corner for the next thing that's coming so that I can be a few steps ahead of it. And, you know, again, maybe part of that's my own fault for the type of personality that I have. You know, I, I look for that sort of stuff because I'm like, hey, you know, I've read this in the history books. I've seen this happen to countless different uh, civilizations. And it feels like it's happening here. I should warn people. But again, that comes at a cost. When you start warning people and you're making them uncomfortable, Especially if you get them in a place of uh, cognitive dissonance, most likely you're not going to be hearing much back from them. And that is so unusual to me because, man, when I was younger, you know, I, I was still in high school, but my wife, of course, she was my girlfriend at the time, she was in college. So I was going down and hanging out with her as much as possible. And she had we had both of us had several college friends down there even though i was a high schooler they all accepted me and i fit right in with their group and and we would sit there and talk about serious political issues with amongst liberals and conservatives and nobody got to the point where they were you know storming off or or, or screaming at the sky or, or getting you know i mean not to say it never got heated because they did get heated sometimes but we were all friends at the end of the day. And I don't know when that changed, you know, but it did, it did change. I have lost, I mean, everybody that ever leaned a little bit left in my life is pretty much cut contact with me. And that is painful. It's like, wow, man, you know, I mean, I get it. You have a different set of beliefs than me and I don't expect anyone to be in a hundred percent alignment with me, but uh, to just ditch someone like that because, you know, whatever, because they don't believe you, you know, they could just, they could just say it and just be like, nah, I don't agree with that. You know, that's just not my thing. If you want to worry about prepping and worry about the next thing, you go ahead. You know, I'm going to worry about whatever this is over here. But yeah, it's just, you know, that's one of the reasons actually that I do these videos is that, I mean, I've got a lot of stuff on my mind and I'd like to get it off my chest and I'd like to be able to discuss it with people. But Again, there are so many places where the, the types of topics that we discuss here are forbidden topics. You're not supposed to discuss them in the work environment. And I get it, you know, I get it. On the other hand, it is one of the things that has divided us and made us put such a big wedge in between us. Because now we can't even actually go directly to the source and talk to someone on the other side. We have to take the word of the lying media the mockingbird media that I've tried to point out m millions of times here on the, it seems like, you know, hundreds of times, let's say it that way. And so, you know, what's the solution? You know, I'm not telling you not to go out and talk to people about things that you're passionate about. You should be able to be who you are and be yourself, you know, around people. And if they don't like you and they don't accept you, Hey, so be it. Um, but it's going to be lonely some of the time, whether you're just getting into prepping and you're trying to get other people that you love to think about prepping, you're going to lose people. 
They're going to make you feel isolated. And I'm just trying to prepare you. Is it the end of the world? No, it's not. Sometimes I come up with some of the best stuff ever when I'm sitting out there on my land just thinking and contemplating and trying to figure stuff out. Because I take that phone and I turn it off or I put it aside where I can't view it or see it or hear it. And, you know, uh, some of the best time I've had is riding on my tractor while I'm brush hogging. I mean, I'm in such deep thought when I'm doing that. I have to, I have to constantly remind myself to pay attention to what I'm doing because I can get too comfortable and kind of forget what I, uh, you know, and run over something or whatever. So you have to not get in your head too much, but I think that's good stuff because it helps me, at least in my own personal life, it helps me process a lot of these things. I mean, like last week, there was so much crap that happened in the news that anybody that's paying attention, your head was just left spinning and it leaves you confused. And a lot of times that's when I do my processing, you know, uh, <clears throat> I was whining about not having anybody to play guitar with. Well, you know what? The thing about that is that I still, you know, play with myself, I guess I <laughs> will say, uh, uh, you know, I sit around and I jam by myself and sometimes I'll turn on a YouTube video and like get someone else that uh, they have these uh, backing tracks, they call them. And I'll go on there and play these backing tracks, like acoustic backing track, and I'll pull out my guitar and play some little lead licks and, you know, stretch my fingers out and try to keep that memory going. Because stuff like that, especially if you're not into music, you're not going to get this, but there's something about playing a guitar or playing any kind of music, I would imagine, in any kind of instrument that it's, ah, it's a lot cheaper than therapy. Let's just put it that way. It's one of those things that I've gone in in a really crap mood and picked up my guitar and felt right as rain after I was done. So I don't, I don't know what that is. It seems spiritual. I hesitate, I hesitate to call it spiritual because, you know, I'm not sure, but there is some sort of a a soul connection when you play good music. And anyway, uh, I do still enjoy that, you know, and, and a lot of times I'll do, I just do things by myself. You know, when I go ride dirt bikes, I, a lot of times I'm by myself. I've got a buddy with a dirt bike, but you know, again, he's got other stuff going on. He doesn't always have time to come and ride. And actually his bike's been broke down for like six or eight months now. So it's not even an option for him, but, uh, yeah, guys, I just wanted to discuss this and open up the topic. I'm not saying I have it all figured out because I don't. Um, there are times that I go through it and I struggle with loneliness. There are other times that I, you know, I, here's my best advice to you. If you're really feeling sad and blue and lonely and stuff like that, you need to take on a project. That's my best thing that I can do. It makes me feel better. You know, it makes me just when I stand back and I look at something that I created or that I restored or repaired or whatever, it makes me feel a whole lot better. And it takes my mind off of those lonely thoughts where I'm like, man, you know, it sucks when you can't just go out and, you know, have a buddy to throw Frisbee with or have a buddy to go and, you know, go fishing with or whatever. Because as, as I've gotten older, man, again, my friend list has gotten smaller and smaller and smaller and or the friend pool and you know uh again some of that's my own fault some of that was from me maturing and learning that some people were just you know not the kind of people that i wanted to be associated with or socializing with and so, you know, you learn a lot of stuff and when you're, as you're aging and things like that, and you become more wise and, you know, but it makes it, it is, I, again, oftentimes a lonely existence. And it's a shame because it doesn't have to be this way. I know there are tons of like-minded preppers, homesteaders, homeschoolers, conservatives, libertarians, you know, classical liberals i think there's still a few of them out there that i would probably love to sit down and have a conversation with but they're closed off and shut down as well so it's not a one-way street is what i'm saying you have to put yourself out there if you're gonna 
you know, try to make new friends and stuff like that. And, and oftentimes, at least in my situation, I'm not putting myself out there. I'm self-employed. I own a hundred acres out, you know, in the remote section here of my County or actually the next County over. And I spend a lot of time there. You know, I've got animals, livestock, all this stuff. I've got to take care of daily obligations. So these are things to think about and you're going to have to prepare for that. And just know that a lot of these other people are, that are out there, you know, those libertarians and conservatives and all those that I mentioned, they're feeling the same way you are. And they're looking for someone just like you to be friends with. So as crazy of a time as it is, we need allies. We need friends. There's times that, you know, again, I count on you guys. I'm bouncing stuff off the wall because this is the way it seems from my perspective and my viewpoint in the small time frame that I've been alive since 1975. You know, and I, I do research on historical facts and things like that too to try to get more information. But yeah, you know, again, it's tough. I don't really have an answer for it, but but you know, don't let it don't let it uh, force you to stop. Don't don't let it make you quit, because a lot of people will when they hit that loneliness wall. And they may even decide to compromise on some of their values and their outspokenness to shield their sensitive friends from that side of them. And I, I think that's, you know, that's, that's not being yourself and you should always be yourself and let the chips fall where they may. But that's just this guy here telling you, you know, I've got like, two or three friends left that I could <laughs> seriously, I've got like two or three friends left. And you know, I used to have dozens of friends, but I'm always reminded of that scene from uh, tombstone where doc holiday says something about, uh, he, uh, one of the other cowboys is asking him why he did something. And he says, well, he's my friend. And the cowboy replied back, well, hell, I got lots of friends. And Doc Holliday, I mean, in that classical way, one of the best movies ever, he just deadpans and looks at the guy and says, well, I don't. And that's, that's how I feel right now, guys. I mean, I got all you guys, but again, I wouldn't know you from Adam. You may know me, <laughs> but I wouldn't know you. So I don't see your face. You know, I don't know what your uh, facial expressions are like when we're having these discussions and these different things. I don't know what it is that triggers you. It's a one way conversation. And that's one thing I hate about this platform is that, you know, at least with Facebook, you could reply back with a video comment or something if you wanted to. And I wish YouTube was like that, where in the comments section, you know, people could make their own little short video or something and say, Hey, you know, I liked everything you said, except for this one thing here. You know, I just think that would be a whole nother uh, level to it that would make it a lot more interesting and a lot more interactive, you know, where we could get to know each other a little more. But anyway, part of that is also my own fault because <laughs> again, self-isolationist, like I've kind of, and I didn't, I didn't set out to be a self-isolationist. That's just how it happened. Right. Uh, I don't tell people where I live. I don't tell people what state I'm in. I don't tell people what my name is and it's because the internet's a scary freaking place, man. They can track you down. They can, they can, uh, uh, what the hell do they call it? I can't remember what it's called right now, but these fake police calls where if someone doesn't like what you're saying, swatting, they call it swatting. They'll call in the SWAT team or the, the police department and say, oh yeah, uh, hands-on channel. He's got a hostage in there and, and you need to go over here and check it out. He's heavily armed here. Look here at this video where it shows him shooting this gun. You know, you see what I'm saying? So that's why I have to be the way I am. So it's nothing personal, guys. And I, sometimes I wish I could tell it, but my wife and I are trying to remain as anonymous on the internet as possible. And I've managed to do that so far. But it does scare me, these people that are like cyber stalkers and stuff like that. There's a lot of bad stuff. So I advise you, you know, be careful on your online 
uh, friend making stuff and things like that. And these, these meetups and different things we've all heard about like the Craigslist killer or the Facebook marketplace person that lures you over there and tries to take advantage of you or something like that. So you do have to have your guard up. And I think that's why I, I you know, just to finish this off, I think that's one of the reasons that myself and many other people are so closed off and, and have chosen to be more self-isolated is because we watch the freaking news, okay? We've seen the murders, the rapes, the wide open borders, the MS-13, the fentanyl, the, you know, I mean, you name it, it's out there and it's happening right in your local city and town and whatever, right? So the more of that we see, the less we trust people in general. And I think because the internet shows us and exposes us to so much of that stuff around the country and around the world, we're continually inundated in it. And so we're always like, we are, we're always walking around with a shield on, right? I mean, I, I said something to someone randomly a few weeks ago out in public and, and it was just like, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, something like that. And they looked like, like it was the first time they'd ever been spoken to. Like I was a, you know, like I was the first white person they'd ever seen. And I just came across their uh, South American uh, remote, you know, isolated tribe that is, that's the way this person looked at me. And that's one of the reasons that I came to this realization today that we have an epidemic of loneliness. So guys, I've gone on long enough here. I'm not trying to bum anyone out or anything like that. I wish I had the answer for how to cure this, but you know, to go out and make new friends requires a level of risk and exposure and trust. And personally speaking, those are things that are, I don't give out lightly. I'm very selective these days. And partly it's because I've had these these people that I thought were my friends along the way that ended up stabbing me in the back and it makes you put up a guard. It makes you, you know, harden yourself to the outside world. So what do you guys think? Am I on to something here or am I totally off base and I just need to go hang out with a few people or whatever? <laughs> I don't know what the answers are. I sure wish I did. Uh, I love reading your comments, so hit me up down below and maybe we can figure this thing out and maybe we can, you know, somehow turn this thing around because it just seems like we're at some sort of an impasse here where you can't talk to the other side anymore. And, you know, I've been watching a few debates on YouTube. Uh, I can't recall the name. Jubilee. It's like J-U-B-I-L-E-E, -E, I believe is how it's spelled. Go check out that channel. They've been doing some interesting debates. I first saw them because they had Charlie Kirk versus like 25 liberals or something like that. So, I mean, that's like a, a old school WWF match or something where it's going to be a huge, you know, tag team cage event, except it's just Charlie Kirk versus all these liberals. I couldn't resist it. It was a pretty good debate, except for, I, you know, there, I didn't like the way the moderators performed. Uh, they could have done a little better, but... I think that's what we need more of, believe it or not. We need to be able to talk to the other people. We need to be able to say, hey man, I know you believe in all this stuff that I think is evil, but what do we agree on? You know, I like food. You know what I'm saying? I like to eat. I like to drink, you know, clean water. I like to breathe clean air. Can we agree upon that at least? You know, <clears throat> I like to be left alone at my house to raise my family as I see fit. Can we agree upon these basic things? Because if we can't, there is no future that doesn't involve civil war or at least civil unrest. And I really hope that's not the case, man. So anyway, guys, appreciate you tuning in. Let me know what you think about all this. And until then, we'll see you next time.